moment. Uh, it's a bit later now, um, and I wanted to finally just finish up this vlog for the day. Um, I wanted to tell you about my triathlon experience last weekend. Um, it's been taking me so long to just get around to doing that. And while I'm doing that, I'm actually kind of multitasking. A friend of mine, this little baby, is turning one tomorrow, and I realized, oh yeah, I should probably give him a little present. <laughs> Uh, and so I'm going to make him a pair of pants and, uh, or maybe a couple pairs of pants, we'll see. And first I need to just like make a little uh, pants pattern. <laughs> so I kind of have one online that I'm copying. Um, okay, so my triathlon went so well. It was like everything that I wanted to happen, happened. Um, I had a good idea of what my pace was going to be. Um, and I like kind of what I was aiming for like for instance I knew I could probably swim 750 meters in around 15 minutes and my goal was like to get it under 15 minutes and that would be fast like that would be I think that would be pushing it for me like I wasn't really sure because I hadn't really timed or swam in the open water um, until the Monday before the race where I did, I swam across the lake, which was roughly just under um, 1,500 meters, and I swam that in a 30-something minutes, just over 30 minutes. So not so long, but like that was, I stopped a bit, and it was twice as long as what I would be swimming. Uh, I had no idea what the currents would be like. I think that would change everything when you're out in an op open water swim. So for me, from whenever the like I, there wasn't a chip at the very beginning because we were just on a beach but I was in the first wave um, but I stayed kind of at the back of that wave so I guess like I maybe lost a couple of seconds just getting into the water because there were people ahead of me I didn't want them to trample me so I stayed back and then uh, when we got out of the water we our chip time was a little bit just up the beach so once we were out of the, the sand and dirt and then we like kind of ran along a path and I saw my dad, he cheered me on and I was like, thanks dad. And he took some pictures of me like out of the water and I, I have the really funny looks on my face. And then right into the transition. So first transition went pretty well. My feet were pretty much dry from running and just like getting up there into the transition area. I, my wetsuit came off so quickly. Body glide is so useful it worked so well I just kind of like I had taken off the top half as I was running to the transition area and then when I got there it was just kind of like pulling it down in my I pulled off both legs very quickly I was kind of like whoa okay I thought that was gonna take way longer uh, so I did that and then I put on my shoes and then I grabbed my helmet put on or I put on my sunglasses put on my helmet and then took my bike and went on my way uh, but then I was stopped by a mar marshal or whatever, and he was like, I need to stop you because your helmet strap is not tight enough. Which is true, my helmet strap tends to just, it loosens itself off all the time. Uh, just, I wear it all the time sitting riding and I like carry it around my arm and I like put stuff in it when I'm like shopping or, you know, doing stuff I don't, when I'm commuting and I have my helmet with me. So it loosens itself up and I didn't even think about that before, <laughs> before doing the race. It was, I knew I needed my helmet and it needed to be done up. I forgot about making sure it was tight enough. So he was fiddling with that and it took about a minute for him to tighten up my helmet and I was just kind of, he was like, you know, we have to do this. And I was trying to be as understanding as possible. I'm like, yes, I, I understand. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And just thanking all the volunteers as much as possible. And then I got up on my bike and took off and my heart was still racing from the swim so that's, it didn't take as long as I thought it would. So the transition for me took just over two minutes, which was about a minute longer than it should have taken and from everybody else. Um, on my age group, I think I was the fifth out of the pool, out of not the pool, <laughs> the lake. So I, I don't know, I'm a fast swimmer, I guess, relatively. Uh, and then I got passed by a couple of, couple of the girls on the bike because I wasn't, well, I'm not a very experienced cyclist. It's my first ever 
bike road race that I had ever done. And so I was hoping, once again, I was hoping to do it in under 45 minutes or under 50. That was kind of my easy goal. Like I pretty sure I can do it in 50 minutes. I'm going to try and do it in 45 minutes. See, like I had no concept of doing this because the only bike ride I've ever done, there were like stoplights and people and it was just kind of, it's hard to really tell how fast I could actually go. Uh, the bike I was riding, I was very fortunate to have been lent a bike from my friend who has a road bike, but she has touring tires on it. So it was a light, a relatively like much lighter bike than my commuting bike, but the tires weren't like road tires. They were like um, street tires, I guess, because she, she bike tours. She tours with her partner. They've biked across Canada and they go on very long bike trips. So it's a nice bike and it does work really, really well, but the tires have a lot more friction. And I don't know, I have no idea if I would have been any faster on an actual road bike or not. I have no idea. And the only way I find out is if I actually do that someday. Um, so yeah, I still managed to keep, I guess, a rather quick pace on the bike because I did that in 43 or 44 minutes. I don't remember. I think it's 43 minutes. So I was, I was passed by two other girls, but then I managed to catch up and pass some of the other ones who were fast swimmers but slow on the bike. Uh, so that's what happened there. Um, fueling on the bike. So I had one water bottle with water and one with the Vega Endure, which has no sugar in it or no carbs. It's just electrolytes. And then I had taped a cliff gel onto my handlebar. And I just, as I was racing, I, I didn't... I had to like remind myself like okay now go have some water and so I would do that and like okay you should have some Gatorade now and I almost crashed at one point because like trying to put the water bottle back was tricky because I hit a pothole right when that happened but somehow by some miracle I didn't crash I just kind of like whoa I swerved around and then everything was okay luckily there was nobody passing me behind and I didn't fall because that would have been probably really bad and I would have been very grateful that my helmet had been tightened. Seriously, I still kind of am. I feel really lucky about that. Um, so after, it felt so much longer, like the 20 kilometer bike, I was like, oh, is this never going to end? Uh, so there were signs up, I guess, for the half Ironman running distance or something that were saying like nine kilometers, 10 kilometers, 11 kilometers, 12 kilometers and I was like shouldn't we be turning around now like we're only doing 20 and this is a there and back like but those numbers were for something different because we did eventually I saw the turnaround and I started having thoughts like oh my gosh what if I'm on the half Ironman course right now I'm gonna have to bike like 90 kilometers I can't do that oh my gosh and I started having those kind of thoughts but it turns out that I was on the right course I did do 20 kilometers it just I had no concept at the time so about halfway or it was in the first half I thought to myself okay time to take the gel I'm pretty sure it's been probably 30 or 40 minutes since I started the race so I went to take it and then I kind of second guessed myself I was like oh no I'll save it for later and I just had tape and I put it back on but then it just fell it fell off and I lost it so I didn't get to take my gel which kind of made me go, uh oh. So I kept drinking as much of the Vega Endure as I could, which is only like maybe three more sips of it. I think I finished about half of that bottle. And I had some water as well. So I made a note to myself as soon as you get in, you change your shoes and grab the cliff bar, and you're going to have that on, at the beginning of the run. Just a couple bites of it, and then go or take it as you go running. So I got into the transition eventually, wiggled my way off the bike. I was a little bit like, whoa, jelly legs. Uh, into the transition, changed my shoes, um, helmet off. I put on a hat and I grabbed the cliff bar and then I went. And I just kind of ran at, I had no idea how fast my pace was. Uh, Cause I just was like velocitized from the bike and I wasn't sure how fast I was going, but I was like, well, let's just kind of keep moving just in case. Like, you want to have a your your race pace, not some really slow jogging recovery pace. 
I had a couple bites of the Cliff Bar, and then I just went, I need water to go with this, because this is not even, yeah, it was hard to swallow. But I did take, like, a couple of big bites of it. And then I just ran with it in my hand, and I found that I was passing a lot of people on the run. And I think I made up a lot of time that I had lost on the bike, because I'm not a strong cyclist, but I am a relatively fast runner. Relatively, I still want to be faster, um, but I like how fast I am now. So that felt good, even though I was tired and it was hot, and I was kind of like, how long can five kilometers be? Like, it's so short. Why does this feel so long? Uh, I had enough energy, I guess, from the cliff bar. I took water from every single aid station. I had forgotten my belt with my number on it, so I didn't have my belt, and I was worried that I was going to... I was going to get disqualified because I didn't have the number on. Uh, and then as I was running, actually, it was like three kilometers in, and I saw some friends of mine whose parents were racing in it as well. And they were cheering with all their dogs, and I was like, I forgot my race belt, and I'm going to get disqualified. And then actually a woman who was running behind me, she's like, oh, no, don't worry. You have your chip. Like, it's okay. And I was like, oh, thank God. Thank you. And then she passed me. But it was nice of her to tell me that. So I ran in to the finish, and my dad was videotaping me, so I was like, hi. And I didn't sprint or anything, I just kind of ran, and I was just so happy that everything had gone so well. And, like, I made all those all those little mistakes, like the helmet, the gel, the race belt, like, you know, it could have been so much worse. I could have crashed on the bike course. I could have not have had any water or something like that. I could have definitely messed things up if I didn't have that cliff bar. Um, so I ate the cliff bar right away after the race and then reconnected with my family. And I had, you know, no idea how fast I'd done it. And my dad said, oh yeah, it's like, it was 1 minute and 25 or something around that. Uh, and I did, I finished it in like 124, I think, in total. And I ended up getting 6th in my age category out of about 17 people, which was way beyond what I had hoped. Uh, my sort of reach goal was to get in the top 10 of my age group. Because this is like, this is my first ever triathlon and I had no idea what would happen. And what did happen was awesome. So I'm feeling pretty awesome. Race morning, it was either the rate, no, it was the night before I was telling my mom that I feel like at the peak of my, of my fitness right now. My body feels like it is the strongest and best that it can be right now. And I, I like it a lot. I feel so good. And so good about myself knowing that I have this like vessel to do so many great things that I can actually do that. Even though it was just a sprint triathlon and people who are really probably hardcore, that's it's dinky. And maybe in a few years from now, I will be able to do an Olympic distance one. Or maybe I'll even do like a half Ironman and I'll say, oh my gosh, remember when I just did a sprint triathlon? But it still feels pretty pretty great to have accomplished that. And I know that this is only the beginning of an obsession. <laughs> so it was, it was good. Um, so what's next? Well, next, I am doing a 10K with my family up in that sort of uh, up in cottage country. It's one that we I did last year, and I did it as a, a teenager. It was my first ever 10K race. Um, it's very, very hilly, and it's usually really hot. And it's always fun. It's a small race. It's a very small race. Last year, there was maybe 70 people total, maybe 90. It was less than 100. Uh, I won my age group last year. At 51 minutes, 10K, I won my age group. It's small. So myself and my sister-in-law were like, let's own our age groups this year. We'll win them for sure. Um, um, well, who knows? Maybe we won't. Maybe there'll be someone who's actually really fast who competes, and that's totally cool too. We want to just do our best and get some PBs. Uh, she ran it last year uh, in, I think she was just over 55. It was like 55 or 56, and I ran it in 51 or something. And now... Both her and I, we did a 10K in April, and we both, I got 46, and she got 47. So, she's kind of kicking butt, and it's going to do so awesome. And I'm just going to do my best, and hopefully try to defeat the heat and the hills. The hills 
are insane on this 10k route and it's exciting. I am following a little training plan for that uh, that I found online and that's like part of the race that I, or the part of the run I did today was on that training plan. Where is my scissors? Um, I don't, I don't know if it's uh, too intense or something, I don't know, I'm just doing these training plans for something to do. I find that I need to have a, a plan and like a schedule that's really detailed um, with specific things to do every single time I go for a run. Um, I like it. it. It makes it seem like I absolutely have to do it, you know? Because if I, if not, I had, if I had nothing, would I go for a run? Like, uh, maybe I run three or four times a week and then swim and bike once or twice. Would I even do that? Probably not. I would just be like, oh, I ran yesterday, or well, I ran once this week. Uh, or I would just do the same run every single day, and that would just get boring. So I like following a training plan. It makes it seem like I have to do this today. Like, this is on the schedule. I got to do it. And I apply that kind of scheduling to my professional life, um, being someone who freelances and has to make their own time. It can be really hard to prioritize like what I'm doing for practicing. Um, and sometimes I'll plan out exactly like what things I need to practice. But sometimes I also just like need to set aside certain times and fill it with that. I want to be productive with my practicing, so well, I'll show you the calendar I made for myself. And I do this sometimes. I've started doing this just last year, and it's made a huge impact on my productivity and being active. So you'll see that I just kind of have filled, made my own calendar. And so the blues practice, and I actually have a, a book that I journal all of my music and professional stuff in and then I the orange is the training plan for the run and then whatever else I have like you know my other life stuff I use this date book to have everything else that I have and then sometimes if it's important I'll put it down on here just so I can look so every day I consult my date book and these calendars to see what I have going on. I'll, sh I'll find you a good week where I did a lot of stuff. So here's a week where there were some things where I just have work stuff and other things. It's it, That's not so busy, but that's, you know, appointments and things like that. Sometimes I'll write myself little to-do lists in this book. A little checklist. And there was a busy week. Stuff to do. I like this. I like having something to actually write everything down on. So on that note, tomorrow I have an 11k long run to do. I am going to try and watch the Toronto Triathlon Festival, uh, Olympic distance triathlon. That's down at the waterfront. It's actually right by where I run all the time. So I just need to wake up really early if I want to like maybe go watch a bit of that and then run and do whatever. So 11k, that's not so long at all. Um, and it's easy. It'll be an easy day. But first, I need to sew these little pants. So that after my run tomorrow, I can go give a little one-year-old his birthday present. <laughs> and, um, stay healthy, stay active, see you later.